what is up guys gloss next here and today i figured i would give you guys a bit of an update into my training so i guess we will call this a training vlog so as soon as the football season ended i started this training book i used to use a like an excel spreadsheet to log my workouts but i was getting kind of annoyed with opening my phone over and over and over so i switched back to paper uh, it's just a little bit simpler it's easier to go into in your workouts and flip back and look what you did last week stuff like that so i'm using a paper book and on the cover i put November 15th so I know when my training my, my strength training started so on the first page of my strength training book I put uh, all of my goals uh, the routine that I had figured out for myself I put that down on here I wrote down the PRs that I want to hit and I wrote down kind of you know how recent this last update was because you know life changes and sometimes you have to update what you're doing so I you know I made an update down here and I wrote last update November 27th, 17, for example. I've made some other ones since then, but uh, yeah. So I've been strength training and I've been taking it a little bit more seriously than I have in the past because I've actually been making um, real strength blocks that I've been training through, four week blocks. And I'll show you on this board here what I'm doing. All right, here we have the graph. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. And then we will put this as week one, week two, week three, and week four. One, two, three, four. So I go by this every month. And on the left here we have, sorry if you can't see. We have intensity percentage. So from week one to three, the intensity goes up. So we'll put a point here by one, two, and three. Okay, so one, two, three. So for the first three weeks, I'm doing heavy strength training and the intensity goes up as the week goes on. So if we line these points up here with the intensity, this is going to be around, uh, around 70 to 75%. This will be 80 to 85 and up here we will have 90 to 95%. So what is 100%? 100% would be like a one rep PR, right? Just, just one rep all out, all you can do for one rep. I don't have that included in my training because it's not practical for training. It's a good test, but you don't wanna test yourself every single, every single week, right? And you wanna cultivate that strength. So for the fourth week, we drop the intensity right down below what the first week is, just like that. So we've got week four, and we have this decline in intensity. And week four, make the point over here, we've got 60 to 65%. So the reason that I have this decrease in intensity is because uh, as these weeks go on, you know, you work harder and harder and harder and uh, you don't want to go any higher than this point because at this point I'm doing 90 to 95% intensity. I don't want to go higher than that. I want to take some time to rest because as soon as I'm done this week, I'm going to have to go back to week one. And there's no way I'm going to do that if I'm just completely gassed, right? Because you accumulate so much fatigue as the, uh, the weeks go on. So the deload week is there, which is week four deload, you've maybe heard that word before, deload is when you take a week to just kind of recover your fatigue. It doesn't mean you take a week off. It means that you take a week to just um, dial back that intensity so that when you return back to the start of your next training block, you have your strength again and you're ready to go. So for the deload week, I kind of, I cut the volume down. So I, I cut my exercises um, by like maybe two or three and then I take the sets down. So for example, I would do um, maybe four exercises at three to four sets. And then I would leave the reps the same, but I would also dial down the intensity, right? So you, you dial that down to 60 to 65 percent but you keep the sets up 
So let's start back over here at week one, okay? The first week. So for over here, I would typically do a four by six. So four sets of six and six exercises. And I'll do that same six exercises for these as well. When I get to week two, I'll do a five by five. And when I get to week three, I'll do a seven by three. Now you notice that the four by six is at 70 to 75% intensity. That is the most reps that I will do in one set because my intensity is lower, so my weight's a little bit lower. Then we get to the five by five, I'm doing one less rep, but a little bit more intensity, a little bit more weight, and one extra set from the previous week. Then we get to week three, and I'm doing seven sets. So that's the most sets, but it's actually the lowest amount of volume because it's only three reps. So when I'm doing three reps, they're at 90 to 95%. So it's the most weight that I can move more than one time, basically. So I try to make sure that it's around three reps. So it kind of gives you a good idea as to where you're at with your strength, because this is, you're not testing yourself, but after these two weeks, you're seeing how much stronger you got than the last week when you did seven by three, right? Because you know the next week you're gonna be kind of chilling a little bit. So you wanna go all out on this one. So I shoot for six exercises, a workout, and then I try and do cardio at the end. The cardio is usually 15 to 30 minutes, and that's what I've been doing so far. It's been really good. I've actually been making some serious strength gains uh, because I kind of took my ego out of it, which means that I'm not afraid to go up, you know, add those little two and a half pound plates at the side, you know, every week. Uh, I, just because I feel stronger one week doesn't mean that I add more weight that week. It means I stick to the plan. I stick to my numbers. My numbers, I, I, I calculate. I have an app that helps you calculate what percentage you should be doing based on how strong you are. So let me break down my workouts that I do. I have four workouts I do a week. My first workout is my push day A. Then my second workout is my pull day. My third workout is my push day B. And then my fourth workout is legs and grip. The reason I have two different push workouts is because my push strength was really behind my pull strength. I could pull a lot more weight than I could push. So I really wanted to balance that out. So I added two push days. So as we know, the chest and the delts do are pushing. So I kind of split those into two. I have a chest focused push day with some delts in it. And then I have a delt focused push day with some chest in it. Really want to improve my bench because my bench has always been a weak link for me. So instead of uh, running from it, I've decided to attack it. It's the first exercise I do at the beginning of the week, every week. But at the same time, I didn't want my barbell overhead press to lack because you know I did it right after my bench. I want to give it just as much attention as I do my bench because I, I honestly care more about my overhead press because it will be more resourceful for me in my, in my future plans and my goals. But my bench was really falling behind. So that's what I did. I split them into two different push days. My legs day could also be kind of classified as a pull day because I do my cleans on that day and I do my farmer walks on that day, which is, which is a lot of pulling and a lot of grip strength. Kind of a similar thing with my pull workout. Deadlifts are the most important exercise to me, but I also really do care about my cleans, my power cleans but I don't want them to be hindered because I know how I feel after deadlifts. Like I'm just totally gassed and I wouldn't want to do my cleans then. So I do my cleans after my squats on my leg day. And my leg day isn't like a typical leg day. I'm not about going from one leg machine to the other and doing 12 calf raises. You know, I do a lot of jumping. I do a lot of explosive stuff. I do split squats. I try and uh, target my leg weaknesses and I try and improve them. And I'm also trying to improve my grip strength on my leg day. So I do my farmer walk carries and uh, you know, also my cleans, anything that can be resourceful to me in the future if I wanna pursue uh, something like Strongman. So I can tell you that since November, I've been successful, I think, uh, for bench press, I've added about 20 to 30 pounds to my bench. Granted that I started over again. Uh, it's, I saw where I was at my first couple workouts, I tried to do what I used to, and I couldn't, so I had to lower the weight, so that's how I know where I was at. Then I kind of started back over again from the bar, added a little more weight every time, and I've added 20 to 30 pounds to my bench, which I'm really proud of. I'm really hoping that, you know, by the time I'm done strength training, I'll be able to rep two plates. That's my goal because my bench has always been really weak. I'd like to get a five by five of uh, 225. Yesterday, I was able to do a seven by three of 205. So I'm pretty happy with that. I was not able to do that before. I fit 225 for one, but I mean, what's the good of doing something once? As for my deadlift, I was really just playing catch up. Like I had been successful in the past, but then I took a long time off 
from deadlifting because just of my back and because I was playing football, I really wasn't putting that time into it. So I've been, it's taken me months to get my strength back to what it was. So now I'm starting to see um, more of my endurance is going up, not my strength. I haven't been using any kind of lifting assistance so far. I haven't used any kind of wrist straps or chalk or lifting belts for my deadlifts. It's just been totally raw. So I'm pretty proud of that. But uh, today, I think for my seven by three of deadlifts, I'm gonna bring my lifting belt out of like a two year retirement, just because I'm lifting heavy weight. My back's still iffy. I think it's probably a good idea. So what are my future plans for training? Well, I originally planned on just kind of going right through the year. I thought I always train seasonally. I always stop after winter. Why don't I just go all year? You know, don't worry about football. Just train all year. Don't worry about, you know, blowing up in size or whatever. Just get your numbers up. Just get your strength up. I was kind of planning on doing that, but um, I, I kind of changed my idea of what I want to do a little bit. So I think that starting, I think, after next week, because I'm going to finish my seven by three this week and then I'm going to do my deload kind of catch up on on my fatigue and then starting the next week I'm going to continue to strength train it's just going to be a different strength block so I'm just going to switch up my routine a bit so I like to start all my workouts with my compound lifts like bench press and deadlift and then my other four or five exercises usually support those lifts or they're just other exercises that I do because um, I know the benefits they have and I don't want to get any kind of muscular imbalances by doing only like four exercises a week So I try and keep that in a balance Instead what I think I'm going to do in the future and by future I mean like in a week and a half I'm going to keep the strength training the same, you know, but I'm going to just keep the exercises I really care about like just the things that I want to keep my strength up so I'm gonna keep maybe two or three exercises but it's hard to say because like for example on my pull workout I care a lot about my deadlift, but I also care a lot about keeping my chin-up strength. I also care a lot about keeping my dumbbell row strength. I also care a lot about my cleans. So it's going to be hard to kind of narrow it down to one or two. I think realistically I might keep like three or four exercises, and that will be the first third of my workout. The second third of my workout, the second component, will be HIT exercises. So I'll be doing that for fat loss, speed, explosiveness. And then the third component of my workouts will be cardio. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to keep my strength training going. I don't want to put the brakes on it just because it's summer. But at the same time, I do want to lose a bit of the extra weight that I've put on. Uh, I do want to kind of enjoy my summer. I want to be able to eat what I want to eat. I want to be able to drink what I want to drink without having to worry about, you know, my size. So I kind of when I create this hybrid program where it's, it's two worlds of training in the same place, I want to have my strength training and then I want to have um, cardiovascular, you know, fat loss kind of thing. And I want to put those worlds together and I want to see how that works. If it does work, I'm going to make a workout program out of it and I'm going to sell that on my website so you can uh, do exactly what I'm doing. I will just PDF my workouts and then put them on the website. You might be wondering, well, Zach, why don't you just do more cardio? Why don't you just keep strength training and do more cardio? Uh, well, because time, honestly, I keep telling myself that I'm going to do half an hour of cardio after my workouts, but um, I usually run out of time. I have to be somewhere. My workout, you know, took a little bit longer than I thought. And because I'm just so fatigued after exercising, that cardio just is, it's a real battle. So I want to make cardio more of a focus than I do kind of my fifth and sixth exercise that I do just to support my compound exercises. What I usually do this time of year when spring rolls around is I kind of shift into bodybuilding mode and I start doing high volume and I go four sets of 12 and I just do, you know, eight to 10 exercises a day and I go to the gym six days a week. That's the approach I usually go. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to keep my strength training going, but also try and uh, cultivate some weight loss in there and improve my cardio. I'm going to try and ride that out for the summer and uh, see how far that that will take me. So I hope that this stuff was somewhat interesting and hopefully a little bit informative. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't. That would really help my channel grow. Stay tuned for more videos. Klaus next out.